and welcome back to By Myself But Not Alone. This is episode 9, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So at the end of the last episode, I dropped Alexander and Jonathan off. I got my car, got my things together, and I had jumped on I-70 East. That's a straight shot to Pennsylvania. It's a very long shot, but it's a pretty straight shot. I had to go a good little ways in Illinois, then straight into Indiana, Ohio, a little piece of West Virginia, and right into Pennsylvania. I didn't quite make it all the way in one trip. I drove just under a thousand miles in, in a 24 hour period. And I eventually had to pull over and get just a little bit of sleep. I ended up finding a hotel at about 05 in the morning. And I, I think I was in Ohio and uh, it was a little less than desirable. Um, have you seen The Shining? But uh, it was a place to stay. So I wasn't, I wasn't too worried about it. Now, a lot of people I know view driving as a chore. I'll hear them say things like, oh man, I have to drive a thousand miles. And the way I view it, I get to drive a thousand miles. I really like it. But at some point you gotta pull over, take a break. I also had Brian Fallon and the Gaslight Anthem keeping me company. A friend of mine, David Nichols, burned me the entire catalog of all the Gaslight Anthem CDs and any Brian Fallon side project. That's quite a bit of music. So I listened to all that a couple times each but I want to say thanks Dave those CDs really uh, really helped me on the trip now as soon as I crossed into Pennsylvania I pulled into a rest stop and just got out to look around and that's when it hit me I'm in Pennsylvania I hadn't been there in over 40 years but the scenery assured me that I had been here before I had been there a couple times when I was little we had a grandma on the farm who was obviously here right here in Mascuda Illinois and then there was grandma in Pennsylvania and she lived in Bethlehem Pennsylvania we got to visit a couple times when we were little and like I said it was over 40 years ago but the one thing I remembered I never forgot the tunnels the tunnels through the mountains I was really hoping that I'd be driving through some tunnels and it didn't take me long I found myself right in the middle of a mountain cruising through the tunnel happy I got to go through uh, four or five of them before the Pennsylvania part of the trip was over but um, that, that was one of my highlights of the whole tour was getting to go through those tunnels in Pennsylvania so I finally made it down to the PPG paint arena that's the home of the Pittsburgh Penguins it's a really nice arena um, as soon as I pulled in jumped out of my car and I ran into a, a black ticket holder that I hadn't met before I told him about my YouTube project asked him if he'd mind giving me an interview he said no problem man that's really cool his name was greg he was from pennsylvania so we went ahead and did the interview i jokingly told him if anything goes wrong and the the interview's messed up i'll just track you down and we'll do it again i really didn't think that would happen i i laughed when i told him but it ended up happening when i got home and checked all my stuff you could see him but you couldn't hear him so i i couldn't use your interview greg i'm sorry about that i never did track him down at another show but i did catch him online later he remembered the interview he remembered me saying that and he had a good attitude about it. He just said, hey, shit happens. When I got up to the arena, I did what I always do. I just started yapping, started meeting a lot of cool people. I realized there were a very large number of black ticket holders that I hadn't met yet. And one of them was Dustin Stroll. He's a friend of mine, online friend. I've known him for a good amount of time. And um, I finally got to meet him in, in real life. He, he told me he had a box in his car. He had this box in his car, but we didn't want to run back to the parking garage. It turns out his wife made him clean out the closet. So he, he said, you're going to be the beneficiary of my wife making me clean out the closet. He brought me a care package and I'll show you what's in the box during the state college episode. I met a bunch of new black ticket holders. I met a lot of cool people to do interviews with. I finally got to meet the guys from Ecuador on the rail before the show. That, that was cool. These guys regularly, they, they work hard, save every penny and travel great distances to see Metallica. And I finally got to meet him at this show. And once again, the show went over with the same intensity as the previous shows. It was, it was a great arena, a very energetic crowd. I mean, the crowd was really there. They made it a fun place to be that night. The band brought a good rotation, a great song mix, and the song of the night, in my opinion, that night was Whiplash. After the show, I ran into black ticket brother Guillermo from Florida. He was showing me he finally got a, a drumstick from Lars, and he was really excited. I was excited for him. And there was a couple standing there and they kind of, they saw Guillermo's stick and they walked over and started talking. We hung out with those guys for about a half hour. And what was kind of cool is they were so amazed at the number of times that Guillermo and I had seen Metallica. We had to kind of set the record straight that, you know, our number is really nothing compared to some other people we know. And those people know people that have seen them more than them. We explained to them that it's not a competition. It's just the most common question you'll hear when you're out hanging out with people. It's a good way to break the ice. It's a good conversation starter. 
but it really doesn't mean a heck of a lot. It, it does provide a little insight into where you've been. Pretty soon you start realizing that you've done shows together before, you just didn't have the good fortune to meet each other. So anyway, I wanted to, I wanted to say to Nick and Shannon, it, it was great meeting you guys. Guillermo and I talked about you more than once throughout the remainder of the tour. It was fun hanging out with you. We all said goodnight. I headed to my car. I figured when I got there, I'd hop in and away I'd go. But no, that's not exactly what happened. If, you, if you've ever driven a stick shift, you'll understand this. When I got in my car, I realized something that I, I didn't really pay attention to when I arrived. We were on a pretty good incline in the parking lot, and there was a car parked right in front of me. So when I went to put the clutch in to put it in gear, my car rolled forward. So I hit the brake, and I realized this might be a little tricky. So I tried it again and the car rolled forward and it wouldn't catch it wouldn't catch reverse. So I, I hit the brake again. And I was I was maybe this far from hitting the car in front of me. Now this was kind of a rare situation. It, it wasn't a rookie mistake because every car I've owned except for one has been a stick. So I know what I'm doing. Normally I would have been able to figure out a way to use the parking brake and get out of the little mess I was in. But I was cold, I was extremely tired, and, and now I was kind of freaking out. If I'd have been thinking clearly, I would have gotten the tire iron out of the trunk, put it under the wheel so the car couldn't roll, slide it in reverse, and back on out. But that, that's not what happened. I did jump out and look around the parking lot for anything I could have put under the tire, but I, I don't know why I didn't think of the tire iron, but I didn't. When I was outside of the car looking for something to block the tire with, I realized that way down at the other side of the lot, there was a car and there were three guys standing out there. I mean, it was, it looked to be over a quarter of a mile down there. I hesitated. I felt kind of stupid, but I said, heck with it. Let me walk down there and see if these guys will give me a hand. I said, hey guys, I've got a little problem. They all just kind of looked at me. I explained my problem and they just kind of kept looking at me and I got the feeling they were thinking, this guy's a nut. So I told them I'd be happy to buy him a case of beer. If they walk on down with me and, and help me, if they'd hold my car while I hit the clutch and caught the gear. And then the one guy spoke. He said, man, I'd really love to take your money, but why don't you let us help you just for the sake of helping a guy out? Now that kind of caught me off guard. I, I, I shouldn't have assumed that it would take monetary bait to get some guys to help me. And it was just a gesture. I mean, I really would have been happy to buy the guys a case of beer, but it just kind of stopped me when he said that. And I, I caught myself having to picture the way that all went down. He looked right at me and said, man, we'll help you out. Come on. And we all walked on down. As we were walking down, they asked me where I was from. And I said, right near St. Louis. And the guy stopped, the one who had been doing all the talking and he looked right at me. And he said, man, I gotta tell you, I fucking hate the Cardinals. We all laughed and when we got down to my car, I, I'm not certain they understood what the problem was as I explained it, but when they saw it, they understood what was going on. So they all three just held the car while I put it in reverse and backed on out. So I thanked the guys. I apologized for assuming it might take something, you know. I, I should have just went up to them and said, hey guys, can you give me a hand? They were three perfect strangers. I'd never met any of them. They had to have been tired and cold but they took a little time to give me some help. And I just want to say thank you guys. That, that reminded me that there are still good people in the world. I mean, I know that. I know there are good people in the world, but it, it was one of those moments where I got to see it. And it felt really good, even if they were Pirates fans. So if any of you three ever come across this video and this rings a bell, I, I just want to say thanks a million. That Thank you for your help. And everyone else, as always, I'd like to say thank you for watching. If you like what we have going on here, we'd appreciate it greatly if you'd consider subscribing to our channel. Give us a like, a dislike, whatever the case may be. Leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Next episode, State College, Pennsylvania. We'll see you there. Until then, rock on. All right, uh, name and where you're from. I'm Jim from Bell Vernon. This is Michelle. I'm Jordan from uh, Pittsburgh. I'm Nicole from Pittsburgh. Tammy from Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Anthony from Pittsburgh. Just your yeah. mom? If you haven't seen it. Metallo yeah. moms are cool. Yep. <laughs> uh, my name's Rich. This is my son, Dylan, uh, from Youngstown. Metallo dads rock. That's cool. What's Which that? Some Metallo dads, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. We got a Metallo mom right over here. My name's Nudge from Cincinnati. Uh, Crystal, and I'm from Pittsburgh. All right, how long have you been a Metallica fan? Since 84. Ooh, old school. Have you seen them live before? Yes. How many times? Three. Here? Pittsburgh. Yeah. All Pittsburgh? In the rain with Guns N' Roses. 
what I was just going to ask, what's your your favorite that opening was a favorite act? Favorite concert of all time. Okay, <laughs> and you didn't consider Metallica the opening act? That was a twin bill. That so many people bill, yeah. they think Metallica opened up for him. I think it was the other way it around. A, it was a fight. Yeah. Um, with your other shows, uh, your other Metallica Cleveland. shows, right. what, what's the best opening act you've seen? I just talked about that today. I don't actually remember. Was it? I think it was Faith. Faith No More? Well, that was with that GNR. That was the same one, yeah. yeah. That was the greatest concert. I, I don't remember who opened for him in Cleveland. Alrighty, uh, how long have you been a Metallica fan? It's been what? 22 years. Probably about 18. Thanks, Jerry. Have you seen him live before? <laughs> nope. This is the first time. Whoa. Yeah. Me either. 1987. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm going to say your whole life, I'm going to guess. Probably today she took me oh she's making well, me come he's as i told him he's listened to it for the last two years but he'll be the biggest fan after he sees them in person oh. he like he likes them she's right yeah trust your mother <laughs> that's why he's here okay um so have you seen him live before yeah 2004 yep he was only one <laughs> Should have took him along anyway. He was my baby. Um, he should have brought me. What, yeah. What's that about? <laughs> Pretty much since I was probably 10. Since 10? I was born. Yeah. As long as I can remember. Yep, you were raised into it, huh? Yeah. Okay, have you seen him live before? I've seen, this will be my ninth time. This is his second. We road trip to Detroit last year, about five hours to go see him last year. Yeah. All righty, well, what's your favorite opening act that you've seen? That I've seen with that? Open up for Metallica. Corrosion and conformity. That was good. Yeah, it was good. I've been a Metallica fan since the summer of 95. Have you seen them live before? <laughs> this will be 20th tonight. Big show for me, hitting that 2-0 mark. All righty. Um, best opening act you've ever seen? Best opening act for Metallica? Yeah. It's going to be Lamb of God, hands down. 25 years. Uh, since I've been about 12 and I'm 42. So. All righty. Have you seen them live before? Yeah. I've seen the Black Album tour. We won tickets at a uh, local bar and we had box seats with Jerry Cantrell. It was awesome. Uh, do you have a favorite album? That's a hard question. Can you narrow it down? Ride the Lightning, God be. I have to say it's Load or Reload. It's a tie. That's an odd one too. But... Okay. I don't have a favorite. That's a common answer. That's what this guy just told me. Uh, load. Yeah, probably the same. Wow. Either Load or Lightning. Load. Favorite album is hard to say. It's a combination of Injustice for All and Load. I probably listen to those two the most, but Injustice, hands down, hit play, go all the way through, hit play again. Um, black album. Injustice for All. Least favorite album, do you have one? No. Like it all? There's a plateau of uh, second place. Alrighty. <laughs> How about favorite song? Favorite song. Wow. No, I don't have a favorite Metallica song. It's the same thing. I'm a music man, so I got about 30 on the same level. Right on. Excellent answer. Um, what do you think about the new album? It's cool. I dig it. I, didn't I got see. it on my stand right now practicing it. There you go. Oh, you're, you play too. <laughs> don't ask me the favorite song on there either because I'm not going to tell you. Hero. I haven't had that one yet. I like battery. Battery. <laughs> what do you think of Hardwired, the album? That's the one that I got him turned on to. Yeah. It's fantastic. Did you see it coming? Did you think they had it in them? I mean, they're not fossils, honestly, but they're... Honestly, yeah, I, I you do. You did see that coming. I, I honestly... They're, they're not going to quit until they have to. It caught me off guard. Yeah, and then the Lady Gaga show, I think that just absolutely blew me away that they did that. That was, that was cool. Mine's probably All Nightmare Long. Creeping Death. What do you think of Hardwired, the album? Love it. Love it. Love it. Did you see it coming? It's better than you thought it would be. Yeah, no, you know what? I knew it was going to be good. I love Death to Magnetic, too. It was fantastic. Yeah. Favorite song? Can you narrow it down? Favorite song is Broken, Beaten, Scarred because I went through brain surgery. So that was my rehab song. That song gave me so much inspiration. hundred times, probably, I listen to that. Every day I listen to that song just to tell me that there will be another day. That I'm broken, I'm scarred, I'm beaten, but this is not the end. But you're still here. What do you think of Hardwired, the album? I love Hardwired to Self-Destruct. It is all the old school Metallica with this new 2015, 18 kind of feel. Metallica's got their edge, they're comfortable, they're back doing what they want, and they're doing something that the fans enjoy. I like Fade to Black. 
And what do you think about Brewer opening up? Don't, I looked for him today. I couldn't find anything on him. Jim Brewer, he was yeah. he was Goat Boy on Saturday Night Live. He was in uh, that was a, he he was big time in the nineties. Um, Half baked. Yeah, I seen that. Yeah. But I didn't know who he was. I looked it up. Yeah, you'll know him when you see him. Okay, sure. Brewer, uh, I've never heard of him. Jim Brewer, no, he, comedian. I, I just tried to watch him on YouTube. I haven't really seen anything. Just an interview with him. That's it. All righty. Um, so you'll find out tonight. Did you know anything about Brewer? Not until I read about how bad it was online. I didn't mean to skip you. <laughs> was that from the first show though? Because he was it was it was rough the first show and it got well, real good. Yeah, yeah he, he screwed it down quick. Read it was awful. All right. I find that very interesting. So very nothing, nothing against it really? Pardon me. You're not you're open minded about it. Oh absolutely. Oh I'm very interested in this. I feel like it's a good way to open it up. Just get the crowd rumbling, I guess. I, it's gonna be neat. I love Jim Brewer. Always did. Goat Boy was great. Half Baked was hilarious. Dude's cool. You know. Uh, probably, probably don't even know who he is, do you? Well, I know who he is because you showed me him once. He yeah. was like, "Hey, we're going to Metallica. He's opening up." Wait, you, you're pretty young. How old are you? Uh, fifteen. Brewer opening up was so rough in Madison. He has such a heart, and he's one of us, and he's a great guy. But that was brutal, and I heard he. Uh, tightened up his set i heard he's doing much better but i'm very jealous that one of my other favorite bands ghost that those europe black ticket holders are going to see that fantastic band over and over get there early and love on ghost and tobias what do you do for a living we we come from all walks of life build still mills i would come here build rolling mills pizza guy yeah excellent <laughs> i manage a gas station um federal law enforcement wow Nothing really yet. But you go to well, school, right? Yeah, I go to school. Student for a living. Nothing Soph- wrong with that. Sophomore. Yeah. Okay. I'm a truck driver. Over the road? No, local. local. I'm just in school. I work in radio for 1027 WEBN out of Cincinnati, high atop Frogs Mountain. I enjoy every minute of being blessed. I've got a chance to interview the band. I've met everybody but Kirk. And uh, it's amazing. And then I do audio at my church, which is almost like a second job. And I love that place, Unity of Garden Park. Look up Unity Worldwide Ministries. I'm a CNA certified person. All right. I'm a process operator working with chemicals. If the band members themselves happen to see this, do you have a message for them? Try to stay the way they stayed. Be Metallica. Excellent. It's, it's hard to explain. It's. A, I told her, what did I tell you on the way down? What is Metallica? Life. It's the way you like. <laughs> if Metallica themselves sees this video, do you have a message for him? I don't know. <laughs> say no. no. I like all your answers. <laughs> yeah. You're simple. I but. like drag them along. I really don't have a message, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come back soon. <laughs> if the band would happen to see this video, do you have a message for him? Um. First of all, peace out. My brother got me into you guys in 1987. He passed away last year at 45. And this is for my brother. And last caress, green hell, rock on. Garage, garage days. And we love you. I've always loved them. Passionate. Probably just say, like, be nice to them to respond. Get back to us about it. Oh, and the one other thing I do want to say is they truly are one of the most grateful bands I have ever come across. They truly are one of the most grateful bands. Literally, I they're great for their fans. And what since they day do one. With, with all of the um, fundraisers and I, yeah. I do. Yeah, they've I been dropping money. checks in every city. Yeah, and I don't have money and I donate. That's yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, they are one of the most grateful. They are the most grateful band I've ever seen with their fans. And I'm not just saying that. I'm not bullshit. Okay, last one. If the band members themselves see this video... Yeah. Do you have a message for them? Love them. Rock on, dudes. Thanks for doing what know, they I'm do, awkward. you know. Yeah. All righty. Thanks That's... for doing what you do. <laughs> if Metallica, if the band members themselves see this video, do you have a message for them? Play, load, and reload song, guys. Come on. We love it. Those were your radio staples. Bring them back. Let's hear something from those albums. If the band would happen to see this video, do you have anything to say to them? This next song is about an addiction, and there are many of them. This one 
This one is uh, an addiction to fame. <laughs>